Welcome to another installment of the Underground Lounge. I'm your host, Lou Will. This is also your host, Spank Horton. And when we talk about lounges, when we talk about clubs, when we talk about atmosphere, we have the absolute pleasure of sitting down with someone who's inspired so many different places, including the Underground Lounge, Mr. Michael Barney Sr., Woo. affectionately known as Mr. Magic. And we got Juju here, who is also his son, global entertainment ambassador for the club as well. Gentlemen, how we doing today? Amazing, Excellent. my brother. All right, great, I started great. it off real interviewy. Real interview. I wanted, real to, give, I wanted to give y'all y'all proper flowers, yeah. but y'all know, yeah. y'all know for, for a long time I've been family, and you know this is a place that I consider home. And I thought it was only right that we come here and, and, and pick y'all brains. Let's have some fun, Mr. Magic, Cam this finest. What brought you to ATL, man? Uh, I arrived in ATL off a football scholarship. I went to Duke University. Um, Back in the 70s, Duke. and from uh, Duke, I used to come here on spring break. I ain't never knew black people went to Duke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I ain't never knew about that. You said that off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So when I get out of there, by me, 74, 78, I went to Duke. And, but I used to come here on spring break. Mm -hmm. So that's how I learned about Atlanta, Chocolate City, all that, coming Damn. down here on spring break. And then I sort of liked it. So afterwards, I went back to Jersey and... Um, after I got a little tryout with Kansas City Chiefs for a moment. I didn't make it, I got cut. And after that, uh, they wanted me to go to Canada and wait the next year, but I, ain't, I was tired playing. So I went on and got out of there. So I wound up in Atlanta in like 79. I graduated in 78 and then winded up down here in 79. What and, position uh, you played when you played football? Running back. Oh, yeah, yeah, running back. Running niggas though, but nigga hammer this bitch. So, you know, after that day, I came here and um, dipped and dabbled in Atlanta. That's, mm -hmm. what, that's how I made it here off the scholarship. And Stanley Driscoll was one of Atlanta's little basketball football highs, played with me, and he brought me this way. So uh, I, I did go home to Jersey and tried a couple Philadelphia interviews. They booed me out of there. <laughs> you know, it, it was mean as hell over there in Philly. <laughs> So I said, I told my mom, I said, I'm going to pack up. I don't think I'm going to stay up this way. I'm going to try something new. Mm -hmm. And I just I had a little Dodge Coke and threw my shit in the car and rode out, you know. Now, we were doing our research. Mm -hmm. Spank mentioned that once you originally started the club, is it true you had one dancer? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she was loyal. One she was down dancer, four. One uh, bartender, one, one, bar, one, one beginning at the bottom. Um, had a little girl on the steps with some balloons, holding some balloons. <laughs> now this is so, this is your this is the very first location. Yes, only oh, location. Wow. Only, only location. location. Yeah, yeah. First and only location, and I I had drove around looking for a spot. I, I really didn't even know about strip until. Um, hanging out with some girls one day, playing around and shit, and they turned me on to Foxy Lady. Okay. And I went in there, and that was a, like a saloon. It was, <laughs> was like thrown through the windows. It was real rough, you know? But, you know, I had my suit and tie on, and I'm, I'm moving around, and I, and I was like amazed, because I had never seen strip, mm -hmm. and, you know? Because there ain't no strip in Jersey like that. I don't well, know. they used to have behind the glass up Jersey. Yeah, feel uh, yeah, yeah. You know, they had mm -hmm. the behind the glass. Like a, so. uh, what they call them overseas? <laughs> Peep shows. Peep shows. <laughs> yeah, 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 like that. So I really didn't know. So when I got in there, even though with all the violence going on, it was still sexy. The Just, vibe was right. The women, the vibe. See, listen, with the, with the vibe right, you can ignore all the bullshit. You can ignore all the bullshit with the vibe right. Man, yeah. it, it was like that. It, it was just like that in there. And so um, the girls didn't really know what was happening, but I was so amazed. I started coming back with my suit and tie every day with my pencil and paper, looking and taking notes. Yeah, and taking uh, all that free game. Trying to watch and learn <laughs> the game. So that's where I started at, right there at Foxy Lady over there on Moreland Avenue, man. It's still still there today. It's crazy, too. So, so was uh, the girls that you was hanging with going there, was one of them was the first dancer that you had? No, 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 no they weren't even dancers. I didn't even know nothing about dancing right. like that. I was a little businessman back then, you know, coming off of, um, I was still self-employed, mm -hmm. but I was selling toner, uh, uh, office supplies, stuff That's like that. That's how you got the name Magic. That's where I got the name. 
Oh, Magic yeah, they, 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 they said you kept coming back yeah. no matter what they gave you to sell. I was selling the toner over the phone and uh, salesman of the year about 18 months in a row. And so they, they, oh, yeah. they started saying, that nigga mad. <laughs> went like that. They started saying, he's mad. I was all wrong while I thought your nickname was mad. <laughs> I, I, I was in a completely different. I thought when you came to the club, you just told him a sister guy. Uh, uh, take uh, Sherry. Uh, uh, take Charmin. A, a, a toner <laughs> salesman. A toner <laughs> salesman. No, tell, me about, uh, tell me about Michaels. Uh, you also have you, you so, pop yeah, after I got Magic City rolling, and a couple years later, after we started picking up, and you know, Dion and Dominique and the Vibe had got here. Like yeah, let me stop you because I've heard so many from a hundred percent of places yeah. that Dion really championed Magic. Is that is that a a real thing? Is he one of the first people that really showed the club some love? Prime probably elevated me. You know, Prime did that made it blow off. He brought me MC Hammer with you the baggy MC pants on, man. <laughs> with the pants on, and that was it. You know, he brought MC me and MC Hammer, and man. And this is at the height of Hammer. And he was cool, hammer, yeah. and, and it was Hammer time at that time. Right. <laughs> man, he had them pants on, he came right up in here like that. <laughs> And from there, I ain't look back, man. Can you back. imagine Hammer getting on the table dance? Man, Boy, you got them pants, 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 pants all over the place. Pants all over the place. Like you that. might bust a poop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I always got love for him and Dion. You know, Dominique. Uh, then, you know, then when Dion got drafted, I got picked a couple of picks where it was Sandman, him, Sandman, Derek Thomas, me, mm -hmm. and Dion. So they were the first three picks. Right. Wow. All up in here in a pick with me. So after that day, man, we turned, it, it just blew away. So recently, Dion was telling me, he called me one time. He said, man, it's a damn shame I got to verify that my kids that I know you. <laughs> I got to verify that my kids that I know you. Stuff. You know, and I, it made me laugh, man. Ju, when did you real when did you realize kind of what what the family hustle was once once pops pivoted? So, I went to like a Christian private school all the way up until high school. So I didn't I didn't know shit till I got to Southwest Cab and they telling me. Ain't you your your class club, nigga? Tell yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell me. I know your daddy. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> and then after that, I started um I just you know I started seeing a little shit. That, around the house that was giving me uh, hints, you know, because they did good keeping it, keeping it as And you know how I get run. that? Because my kids, they favor wings on is Magic it? City, but they have no clue they until they from? see this, <laughs> where the wings is coming from. <laughs> <laughs> That's all they know. They just yeah. love the wings. Mm -hmm. They bring them wings home. So yeah. I didn't even know until about high school. And I was still like, I'm mean, still working regular jobs and shit. Like I was working at McDonald's and I find out, you know, I found out why I'm working at McDonald's and shit, so I'm like flipping burgers like this nigga. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, oh, this nigga won't even, I know, he, you know I know now. Right? Right? Like, right? Man, yeah. that shit. Um, but you know, so right around high school is when I figured out for the most part, yeah. right around 10th grade, 9th, 10th grade. Imagine, I know um, your original logo was a magician. Yeah. Over the, over the club. Uh, that was that was me trying to hover, you know, <laughs> back there, trying to learn a couple of tricks. I, you know, you needed tricks back then because you had Blue Flame, you had um, shit. There was a bunch of them. Foxy Lady, you had Tell me about the, purple onion. Oh, the yeah. Onion. Ah, uh, yeah. yeah so, you know about the Onion. The Onion. Uh, it's the old school strip club. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the, the Onion. Time, that, that, was was the, that was the only other black strip club in Atlanta. Wow. Wow. The yeah. Onion, Foxy Lady, Blue Flame came around. All of them was there, and you had um, Montres over here in the West I don't End. Know about Montres. Montres. They was hard. The West End. They, 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 they was hard. <laughs> you had to go <laughs> hard. Man. You had to go hard. So that's how come only had one girl. You know, you had to, you know, and they was threatening you and saying, but you know, don't take my girls. But you know, they was threatening. So when they hear you open. You know, now they don't even want me in the door, right. you know, because I'm trying to just, but then, you know, I caught a DJ, um, and the DJ had a girl, Venus, and and Andre. Andre was the DJ, and he brought Venus. I was a midget? No. Andre, oh, no. Had, Andre. Had yeah, we yeah. had a midget DJ, too. A lot of magic tricks on him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and he, he, he's the one with, with the Circus Olay. 
Okay. The, the little, oh, wow. You see him, the little short one with Circus Olay. Oh, wow. So he was he with was me years, way before then, you know. Wow. I used to have him. Standing was, on phone books and shit. You on crates. He used to stand on crates and shit <laughs> that, back there. But it was, it's been a lot of great times. Jew, I want I want to double back because uh, you brush past it. Now, you say you at McDonald's, but at the back of your head, you know, Pops got the know. city, Pops got the city going crazy. City going what was that first conversation like to transition from that to this? Um, I don't re remember the exact conversation. Um, it just, it just came about, um, I started, you know, like being at Southwestern Cab, I started to get more of the hood culture, the East Side culture. So mm -hmm. I just naturally started to gravitate towards the strip shit. I mean, just naturally I started right. to, mm -hmm. to grow up quicker. And, mm -hmm. um, right. you know, I mean, once I knew, I knew it. Then, um, you know, we never really had a conversation, you know. That's what you I was going You know, I'm just like, right. you know. I was going to ask, how did the conversation go? Like, Pops, there wasn't no on. conversation. He, he, he was just like, come on, get in the car. Like, like, and then I would sit outside. Hot, so like, even, what are we doing? What even we doing? at 16 and 17, I was sitting outside, you know. I used to go with him every night when he go. Then I would sit in the front and just watch. Like, I used to see right. Lil John and the East Side Boys running in that bitch. I used to be like, <laughs> in the car. <laughs> I, I ain't trying to, I ain't trying to tell you age, but what, like, what year was this? Oh, uh, shit. Had to have been 2005. Them damn near, are them, would you consider them like the, the glory days? Because I graduated in 07, so it had to have been like 2005. <laughs> I guess I want you to piggyback on this too because we was talking about it more, on camera. Like oh, yeah. maybe 88, 89 is when Dion, when we really started kicking off once Dion and, and uh, Dominique got in town. They made the town hot. Mm -hmm. They gave us a little flair we never had. Right, you know, right. I was just slow, slow dollaring from mm -hmm. there. We were just grinding and it was hard work. Um, but then once they taught you, once I started picking up that people would go crazy over famous people. Mm -hmm. That's when I started learning how. Okay, oh, yeah. yeah, I said, dang, that's these you got your go, hospitality game going. They go crazy <laughs> over one famous mama. Like, oh, you know, the, the, the money going up a little bit. That's it, you know, so and I'm looking guess, for the next famous Amos. I'm around trying to find famous, famous Amos. You know what I'm saying? I need a famous because these people are hooked on yeah. famous people. Mm -hmm. It was really and I was back then. That's it, it was really amazing to me how how people gravitate to stars or anybody. You know what I'm saying? And, then Jermaine Dupree kicked in with their songs and mm. their different stuff. And his song with Puffy and all of them became a big one. Welcome to Atlanta. Yeah, mm -hmm. where the players play and Freak Neek started getting, was so close to us being downtown. I used to just catch the deep. And then I lucked up and meet a couple of D-Town boys from Detroit and all. And so now uh, I'm starting to fuse. Yeah. Who, mm -hmm. who from Detroit, Pops? Well, you know, way before I meet Meech, I, you know, I used to have all the. <laughs> before I ever met him, before I ever, I ever met Meech, I used to meet a lot of other Cleveland and, and Detroit boys. Um, the real players. Yeah, they were the real players coming with the, you know, and, and then the pimps from Chicago. And I started meeting the pimps, and then, so I used to try to invite them all in and stuff, but then they'd be like, well, what is she doing with these women? You ain't getting paid. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, they pay me. Phillip's like, you I mean, want all like, this money. You mean all these women and you and none of them belong to you? No, nah, they don't belong to me. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, man, they, they had was turned to the side. They was like, we don't know what you're doing, Magic, but you're messing up the game. <laughs> 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 they, they used to be on me, man, about that <laughs> shit. Like, I'm worried they never come in here with me. So they used to get on us, man, but you messing the game up. You almost giving them a free out. Right. With this shit. Yeah, you're giving them a free <laughs> out. I, 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 I said, hey, man, I'm just trying to hustle up a meal, you know? Because you, you started coming to, to the club around around my first experience, 05, 06. 05, 06, yeah, you yeah. was, uh, you was um, at the Tizzle back like then. See, I'm I'm gone then, 05, 06. Oh, I'm you had to just get back. 05, now I'm gone. 05. Mm. You got back in 05. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm back in 05. I'm yeah, back, back I come over 02. I come back over 02. I remember. Okay. Remember that yeah. time? So, I burned the house down and you beat my ass out. <laughs> I remember that. I remember. I know it was 05. Well, when, yeah. I come, when I first That's come home, home when I first come bro. home, I, they, they take me to the school and stuff. Some shit back. <laughs> Motherfuckers, they were out walking the track and they done went to this little house to smoke something or something and then the lit, and lit a mattress on fire or something. Yeah. So I, gotta go to, I gotta go up to the school. I'm just coming home, <laughs> heated up, and you know, I don't know. 
Yeah, you so, had them prison look. Yeah, that was on. that. That was <laughs> about like that, 204, 200 something mm-hmm. like that, 204. But so it was crazy back then. So you brought up Meech and uh, the famous BMF days in here. That came more, fuck, when I came home. I and, saw the tail end of it. Yeah, yeah when I came tail. home. Uh, so I, I knew Meech like before I ever was incarcerated. I knew Meech. Mm-hmm. So I guess I must meet Meechie 80, 90, 91. Mm-hmm. And he just is a little young uh, little dude running around for. Yeah, that's way before we heard about him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He right. just running around with um, a guy named Easy from LA. And he was like a flunky for Easy. So I knew him before. So when I come home and, and everybody hollering, Meech is the man. Who, what Meech? You know, the one that used to go take girls shopping and shit? Yeah. They, they got say, it together. They say, man, he the man for real. So they had a party up. When I first home, they had a party at Puffy's up there on... Uh, well, Justin? No. Justin. 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 Yeah. Justin. They got the party there. So they got all the bottles and people. So somebody's sitting right in the middle of the party like this, and they combing his hair. I said, who is that? <laughs> they, they was good. Two of them combing Meech's hair all out, and they combing his hair right in the middle of the party. I didn't know what was going on. You know? <laughs> so then I walk over the wards, and 10 people stand up. Hold it, hold it. You can't come close. I'm like, whoa, what is going on right. there, you know? And that's Meech. I said, oh, my God, Meech, the man. Huh? So that's the first time I had really got a chance to see me, you know, and know him. And then he's, you know, he's like, okay, y'all stand down. That's, that's my own. Uh-huh. And he let me come on over there. And I'm like, what are you doing with this hair? This hair was down here. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> the last time you seen yeah. on, the, on the show, he yeah, got a little yeah, fro. Yeah, yeah, he was yeah. just like, he ain't had none of that when I saw him. I yeah. ain't know this yet. But he was 18 when I used to, when I first met him, he was a kid, 18, right. 19, you know. So then he, he grew up into the man. Whether you're a world-class comedian or a podcaster like me, we all understand the importance of mental and physical well-being and understand that proper recovery for top-notch performance. That's why I'm excited that Unified Healing is sponsoring this episode of The Underground Lounge. Unified Healing is a new and super innovative global network of wellness centers powered by Energy Enhancement System or the EE System If you haven't heard of the EE system yet, you'll want to listen up. This technology promotes wellness, deep relaxation, purification, and rejuvenation. Whether you're here in Los Angeles, in Philadelphia, Chicago, wherever you at, it's an access center near you. And make sure you understand that the access center is easy and affordable. We love affordable, don't we? Yes, we do. Interested in experiencing the EE system technology for yourself? Go to unifiedhealing.com slash lounge to learn more and find a center near you. That's unified, U-N-I-F-Y-D, healing.com slash lounge. No material or testimonials on the Unified Healing website are intended to be viewed as medical advice or substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified healthcare provider with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition or treatment and before undertaking a new healthcare regimen, including EE system. Jude, during them times, what's some of the craziest shit you saw? Because I'm going to tell you, we were so young, I thought that was, I thought it was normal. Right, right. What I was seeing. Like, yeah. I, I really watched Nelly pull a manila envelope yeah. out his pants yeah. with 50 to 60 grand. <laughs> and he's like, hey, I need yeah. some ones. And this is, these are my first experience. So I'm yeah, like, what yeah. the fuck yeah. is going yeah. on? Yeah. Mind you, my very first time coming to Magic City, I'm, I'm with JD. JD yeah. brought me my, yeah. my very yeah. first okay. time. Okay, he brought you the first yeah, time. Yeah, look, a, a real crash course, elementary style. Right. This is how you, this is how you do that. That's how you do it. throw it up, then the money, you throw it in the air. You know, he was giving me a real crash course Play so, by play, so how to then, build. You know, that was I big when Nelly hit us with the booty, with the uh, tip drill. Tip, tip tip drill. drill. Yeah. That was That's big. It. That shot me, you know, from there, man. It was almost oh, like yeah, running across the lake from there. I started meeting, <laughs> you know, then a little Usher, then a little Pete oh, Puffy. Yeah. So mm-hmm. you just started meeting different celebs. Um, 
And then, you know, pretty women grab grab people, you know. Oh, for men sure. like pretty oh, women. For sure. So, for sure. you know what I'm saying? So that was sort of between the star and the pretty woman. Mm -hmm. I still came up with a magic formula. But <laughs> <Same> listen, <thing. laughs> but like that. speaking of magic, though, this, this atmosphere, it's not the biggest club in the world, nah. but it's a family affair. You come in, I've literally been in here from three to three before. You told me. Yeah, I've literally it's been here. It's a 12-hour shift. I've seen I, it. Yeah, I got out of practice. I was playing for the Hawks. I get out of practice. I'm like, I want to eat. You know what I'm saying? So I come over here. I literally got on basketball shorts and flip-flops, mm -hmm. T-shirt. <laughs> so I eat. I'm chilling. I might have had a drink or two. I'm grooving. A couple of homies pull up. Or next thing you know, the first seven o'clock game coming up. Oh yeah, I'm over yeah. again. Yeah. Order another plate. That game go off. Now it's ten o'clock. I'm drinking. Second, second stretch of games come on. Nah, time to get out. Them go off. By then the club cracking. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Now the club packed. So I'm all in at this point. I'm off the next day. I ain't got nothing to do. I'm off. So I've been in here from three to three, but it's just a. I think the smallness it sort of keeps you in there because the big clubs have it's a hard time. Because the people got to spend money. Yeah. So people it's don't hard, mingle no more either. And they don't mingle as much. Yeah. You see True. what I'm saying? Oh, so man. it's hard to find a lot of people to come to a big club with the, like, experimenting them. You get yeah. that in Vegas. Right. But it's hard to get it in, in, in Atlanta here. Um, so I think the size sort of saves us sometimes because you're open six days a week, mm -hmm. all day long. And people right. you, people come in one way and leave parking a little jiggy. <laughs> but you know yeah. what I'm saying? So, so it ain't like everybody can play. It ain't, right, it ain't right. like everybody to play that right. game, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> that, that's one of the things that I think kept us alive is keeping it small, keeping and it. And the diversity, man. Man. Every and time diversity. I'm in here, you might see a group of people that look like they're not supposed to be here, yeah, but they absolutely. just as comfortable as everybody mm -hmm. else. And that's, that's the beautiful part yeah. about yeah. it, you know, just a bunch of people having a good time. Treat everybody the same, you know, the celebrities, you treat them with the same respect you treat the people who are of their status and, you know, and then you were able to come without everybody going star crazy when you came in. You know, they don't right. run all on you. Oh, my God. Right. You yeah, know, that, all you, all we didn't do that. Some when, of the women do, though. Yeah, well, <laughs> well, 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 after you feed them. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, um, I think Rihanna was the only person I ever seen where the whole club, like, stopped. Stop. With, with Riri right, right, right here. Dancing. She's standing right here. Mm -hmm. The dancers ain't dancing. Everybody's. Right. <laughs> Everybody like was staring at this motherfucker. Yeah, wow. yeah, seen yeah Rihanna, Rihanna like that. Sheesh. She was big. Um, then Usher brought me Madonna one time. They sat right there, there back there, you <laughs> know, <laughs> the miracle girl. Oh yeah, they just she had some damn Converse sneakers on. <laughs> she had a black Converse. On. Yeah, Converse. I did remember that with a blue jacket with the little thing on it. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> I, remember <laughs> that. I remember that. Man. It was big seeing her sit there. She never did nothing much, but mm -hmm. she sat there she and chilled. that was cool. Wow, that's what's up. She uh, chilled like that. So we've I, had a lot of good ones. I've heard an urban legend about an Egyptian room. Oh, yeah. back in the now day. That's, obviously, that's before my time. Well, what happened is... I got a little blurs, but I wasn't. I got a little <laughs> blurs. So that was prime time's time. That was 89, like that, when the Shaq might have been sad. Dennis Scott might have come through that damn era. They might have been the last of that era yeah. right there. Um, Who they, fucked it up? <laughs> well, what, 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 what happened? happened? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, they used to they play a little, we used to play a little cards, have a little fun like that. Just a low key thing where, with, with stars at first, mm -hmm. you know, stars nobody but just right. play. You know, mess around, let a regular in. Ain't been the same. It ain't been the same. Hey. So it was, it was cool. And, and you know, you remodeled probably 20 times over the years. You just keep, you have to keep reinventing yourself mm -hmm. with it. Um, you just small space, you just got, so I was trying to go down and see one time in the last couple of years if I could um, have my blueprints and drawing. I was going to knock this wall out here and make it a little banker. So the man in the line saw me. He was like, Matt, nah, what you doing? I was like, well, I was getting ready. He said, well, you know if you do that, you won't be grandfathered in. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, you, once you move a wall, you'd be under the new regulations. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh. He said, so don't, get, don't do that. I said, oh, yeah. all right. So, right. Spent my money and stuff, but I just threw that shit in the trash. Yeah, that's all we <laughs> ever grew in size. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Once you do that, then you got five. Yeah, it yeah. was a blessing in disguise, new, though. Though. Huh? It, it was a blessing, it was a blessing in, disguise. in disguise, yeah. Yeah, he kept me, he saved me. So, you know, Atlanta got some good people. Um, and and uh, you met so many good people around the country. So Snoop Dogg mm -hmm. and, and, and um, Daz and them came along around that time. 
So that's when they started coming up. Daz and Corrupt. I mean, them when they was kids. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you know, stuff like that. Y'all literally a landmark. You had the West Coast. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. want to believe every meeting. team I played on, every locker room, Tupac. we come into Atlanta. They come and they want to come, come hang they, out. They got to come kick it. Wasn't Tupac here? Oh, no, Pac? Was Tupac oh here. yeah, Pac was here. Pac was here. Like oh, wow. 90, 89. Pac was 89, no 90. That's right. what he was. Right. Right. Pac got the scarf tied and shit. With the scarf tied up and stuff. I just see his ass again. Hilarious. Yeah, so Pac was around 89, 92. So that was a good era. Um, That's the year I was born. That was a good year for you, 89. Yeah, 89. That, that was the year. That that was a good year. You was born eighty nine. Yeah, that was a big year, <laughs> man. Ships got bigger. Ships got bigger. Women got finer. That was a hell of a time. Man. Man, that was a hell of a time. Oh you know? man. So let's uh, uh, talk of who made it rain. Who started to make it rain? And it, it's between BMF and JD. Okay. Now I, I, I guess I get incarcerated somewhere in ninety four. So I made it, came home 202, in the 201, I came home. So I never seen no rain. It used to be like, man, you know, I'm going to put a 20 in there. That was, rain. That, 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 that was a rain, and you put a 20 in there. Before I leave, when I come back, you know, you put a dub in there, that was raining, you know? I put a dub in the, in the garden strap, everybody had to go in the garden when I left. That's a different that right, yeah. right. So I ain't seen a garden. I didn't even know. So if it, it, it was the 20 in the garden, was rain. You know, that was my first sign of rain. When somebody put a 20 in there, they used to go crazy over mm. the 20. So, you know, and then when I came and I started uh, seeing with Meech and them, they said they, they throw the money in the air. I was like, what you mean? He said, they get the money and they throw it. it. That's right. Like, how they split it up? Who did it? <laughs> <laughs> you know, but they, they just throw it and shit like that, you know? <laughs> so that was my first time really seeing rain. And it probably was BMF to see the real rain, yeah. you know, <laughs> to see some real rainstorms. It was them. Uh, Sheesh. Making it rain. Shouts out to BMF. I Shout lost a lot of money because of y'all, because I had to make it rain now. <laughs> yeah. I, I remember when I first started going to strip clubs, I think the first time I went to one, I was 15, but I was always tall. In Philly, they just had like a regular bar downstairs, but I guess it was like the Egyptian room. Yeah, <laughs> they had room upstairs, yeah, they had like two strippers in there, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Man, I witnessed a young lady spread her legs open and put a bottle up in that beer bottle. I said, I don't like this. I, I, I want to go home. I want to go home. <laughs> it was too real. It was too yeah, real. Yeah, yeah, it was too real. real. Yeah. It was too real for yeah. He had some pros. <laughs> there was some pros. You know, he yeah. had some pros. I want to ask you about the, uh, speaking of JD, I want to I want to ask you about the documentary March 11th. It premieres at South by Southwest down in Austin, Texas. Uh, what was that like filming that and getting that on camera, where people can un understand our culture down here? Um, it was pretty amazing. Um, some good people behind it. Um, yeah, it was we're sort of surfacing. Like like spiring with each other on a lot of parts of it, yeah. and, you know. Um, yeah, we spired some, put some things together, and put some things out there. You know, a lot of things like if people who told they've been to Magic City or whatever, I go with them if they say they've been hanging out. Right. But the ones who, know, who ain't tell on themselves, right? You know, I leave them dead. You know, like <laughs> you know what goes on at Magic, I let it stay in Magic. If they ain't tell it, I can't right. be telling right. it. You see what I'm saying? That's BMF real. and them, they loved it. They they tell it, so I can go with them. Mm -hmm. I can go with yeah. the ones who came through, uh, and you know. That's what the documentary is mostly. So it's a, Everybody else telling their experiences of Magic City and their stories. Right. Yeah. With like your bars. I think I know. sat down for it. Yeah, a lot of that. A lot of different, different little just, parts like that. And everybody else's inputs more than just ours. So it was just, mm -hmm. you know, getting everybody together to see how Magic City affected them and changed the dancers' lifestyles yeah. from, you know, because. A lot of these dancers, we change. I mean, we, we raised them. You got to be my yeah. 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 you, you had to yeah. change, you know. You, Without us, a lot of these bitches wouldn't. I don't know what they would Watch, it, watch, watch yourself. Watch yourself. Uh, you don't know where they would be. So, but well, I try to pay them. Uh, they they make money. They, I try to make them file the taxes, do the right thing, and they're making money. They're doing good. File your taxes. Learn. So they starting to learn how to buy houses, buy cars. They came a long ways. So you know, um, 
a lot of them just changing. They went to school, push school. Yeah, yeah, he pushed uh, school yeah. hard. Push pushes. school. You got to do yeah, something now. Yeah. Right. You know, you should never just stay okay. here. Right. You should always, and, and it's hard for them to straddle because they look at them paychecks and then they look over here. Magic, I made that in one day, <laughs> 20 minutes. <laughs> I'm saying, but that's just fake. You right. know, that's right. magic world. Right. That ain't right. reality. Right. You right. see what I'm saying? Right. You're going to have to stay prepared for reality because yes. it comes. Mm -hmm. You see, and, 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 and this shit is sometimes becomes delusional. You know, it just Facts. becomes delusional. You you buying a Cardi B pocketbook. <laughs> why, why you want a Cardi B pocketbook, bro? You ain't Cardi, Cardi B. B. You ain't bringing my Cardi B. Right. Bring it. Or the Birkins. Yeah, trying to make you understand. Yeah, yeah, even shit now, now. Shit, nay, nay. What you doing with a shit, nay, nay? I be trying to teach reality, man. Don't, you, you know, don't give up 12 grand for no damn pocketbook. Right, you know right. what I mean? That's hard money that you don't understand it yeah. yet, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. But you think that's cute, because yeah. I, I can show him I got this. I show him I got <laughs> nah, then you put weed in there. I'll smack you. Put some weed in there. You put some weed in there. <laughs> no, that's how I don't know, man. There's a lot of different cultures, oh. different young girls going around. There's a lot of different people. But over the years, they gravitated. I've seen a lot of them graduate from school, been to a lot of their graduations and different stuff. I've seen a couple with some honors. Oh, wow. So, yeah, yeah. Some, they make you proud, but then they don't want to go. They don't want to go to They don't want to go to They don't want to come right back. Wow. Yeah. wow. Six months of that man stepping on your neck. Yeah. <laughs> they don't like that one. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they, it ain't no get up when you want to get up. Ain't right. none of that. You know, he's stepping on your neck. You got to do what they say. Yeah, yeah. And then you ain't used to You don't want that. Right. You know, and that seems what's going on here in Latin America right now. These kids, the young people don't want, mm -hmm. nobody wants to be told you got to hustle, you got to work. You right. gotta, you gotta bust, you gotta bust your ass. It's, it's too easy. Now. It's too yeah. easy to make money now. Yeah. So you got, you got money. 16, 17 year old multimillionaires that don't leave the house. Mm -hmm. Well, but I don't know they how they doing it. They, 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 they trapping out the phone, yeah. so it's it's hard okay. to it's well, hard to regulate it's, somebody it's seventeen. It's a lot of new things I haven't seen. Right. Then, like what's that? There's a lot of different stuff. But if it's made over the phones, I might can learn that. That's stuff. what I'm saying. Get my hustle right. right. I might can learn something. <laughs> I'm getting into that. Hey, uh, oh, that's last but not least, we wouldn't be doing ourselves justice if we didn't discuss the kitchen. Hey, the kitchen has become synonymous with the rest of everything sure. else the that the club well, what offers. happened tell us the about kitchen it. was behind that. tell some guy named Lou. okay let's tell lulu it came through there and i think you know he shot us to a, the kitchen to a new level uh, they sure. didn't even know about the, when well, everybody i talked to so i said imagine what the hell going on with them with Lou. I, I don't know what you're talking about, man. man. What kind of wings can make a mess up like that? <laughs> what kind of wings make a mess up like that? What kind of wings? What is you got crack in the wings? I got crack in the wings. What kind of wings make a nigga mess up like that? Mess up. What kind of wings is that you selling? Nah, nah, hey, man. Hey. Nah, but the kitchen is um, the kitchen's a, a whole new right. platform. It's a whole new. And it's, it's different names. It's, it's, it's taking right. on a life of its own. Yeah. It's yeah. And it's different yeah. names for different uh, food, or yeah. you're the only one with the name. For, no, 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 it's different. It's, it's different. You got Juju, Juju, Juju no, got I got a name on there. I'm uh -huh. getting ready to come up. Juju I need Juju the, uh, the sh them shark bites. I need to make them catfish nugget shark bites because Shannon's on me already. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's yeah. on me now. Yeah. I want him to yeah. come yeah. get me. Yeah. That's, that's what I'm trying to get it. Every time he talk about Vegas, he talk about the catfish oh, right. nuggets. That's what I'm saying. So I'm going to make them shark bite nuggets, man. That's going to be them shark bite nuggets, man. You know, the kitchen is um everything. You know, we ship wings all across the country on Gold Belly, like, Weekly and um, cater. cater I know cater all teams events. I play on. We cater when we come into town. I I know Demar Derozan just spoke to me about catering for the Chicago the Bulls, Bulls the last man, time that they uh, wow. was here. It's wild. Wow. Doing, um, I didn't know that. So it's good. It's yeah. coming along, man, and um, just bless. When at the end of the day, that's all I can yeah, say. Yeah. Bless, I'm bless, man. So, y'all ever uh, try to like venture off to other magic cities, or I don't think the the, the the cities are the same. Right. You know, I've been traveling <laughs> all around. I go to a lot of places. Yeah, that, that, stuff, yeah, that, right. magic, that magic sauce don't work everywhere. Yeah. 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 It don't yeah. And, and, and you know, you have to keep a lot of people come to you and say, "Well, let me open one over here." I be saying, "No, because I want. I don't like that city. <laughs> <laughs> that city, <laughs> you, you can't handle it. You don't understand the people. 
right, right, right. And, and it's hard to stay alive messing around yeah. out here with these people That's day true. in and day and night. That's you true. See? So Miami, I said, no, they got too much water. I ain't <laughs> going there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Vegas got too much desert. Yeah. They ain't want to mess around out here. <laughs> you got to know them, man. New York, it just ain't, they just don't have that same vibe. Um, too, too many Looney Tunes right. running around. For sure. For that sure. You can just, yeah. Uh, like I say, everybody don't have the kind of money to play with that little thing. Chicago, we ain't even gonna go close to there. We ain't gonna go <laughs> close to there. You know what I'm saying? So when you come out of them places, you know you can go to country country towns maybe and get away with it. Right. But it, it's more hard work, and they don't have the, the dollar. Mm. See, they don't have the income bracket to keep right. you afloat. Where right. Atlanta's a hub, like the airport, mm -hmm. the people come through here. Yeah. You see, That's so true. we've been more blessed on the travel of. Um, just the people coming mm -hmm. through down there. Now our sports are growing. Right. And yeah, sports soccer are, and everything yeah. is coming. We got the and, World Cup. Oh, yeah, right. soccer. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. So, so, so everything is coming so. through. You yeah. see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. so, yeah, so like when Atlanta United won the, the, um, the, the soccer championship, they brought the trophy here and put it on stage. Wow. And had girls yeah, on the trophy. they come. I came there with my six-man trophy. trophy. Came with the six-man? Yeah. 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 Everybody made the trophy. Yeah. <laughs> so you know that's that's crazy, but that's blessings. That's some Absolutely. unreal stuff in Atlanta, man. So I think this is the best city that we found. Uh, people work together. Um, they cleaning up this side of town, so I can't see nothing but bigger aspirations down this way with mm -hmm. the gulch coming, different things coming to our yeah. side of town. Next five this years. the first time we seen cranes over here. Right. In my forty <laughs> years, they, 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 they ain't seen no cranes. Now, now I got cranes everywhere, you know. So. I'm excited about that. You know, I think it would be a new new ATL in the next five years. There we we go. might be we might be to a new level. Absolutely. You know, the movies the taking off. I went to Mr. Hart so concert Sunday. It was A plus. Uh, it was come on, a man. Plus. Come on, it was A plus. He got me working on my abs. I don't want to my shit up. You know what I'm saying? He got me working on my abs after that. Yeah, I was so, telling him, I was like, hey, man, we got a magical interview. He said, y'all got what? No, nah, I got to make a phone call. I got to interview for four of y'all. <laughs> beat him to the punch. Beat him to the punch. We beat him to the punch. But listen, uh, it's, it's been an absolute pleasure um, to shine a spotlight on y'all and just let y'all know how we feel about y'all, y'all family. Me and Juju have developed a relationship over the years. It's been a privilege running into you a uh, hundred thousand times a year with your, with your red glass of wine. Hey, bro. You, know, you treated me really well and treated treated me fairly and treated mm -hmm. Spain fairly. Of course. So shout out to the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Shout out to the club. Hey, shout, shout out to y'all. Really appreciate y'all. Sure. Appreciate y'all. Sure. Appreciate Kicking sure. it at the Underground Lounge. Until underground next time. Lounge, man. Underground, underground Lounge. Underground. underground.